Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mullen. Today I'm going to show you how to find an empirical formula from a couple of different ways. So we're going to go ahead and get started here today. First off, let's define an empirical formula. It's the simplest whole number ratio of atoms present in a substance. And this is going to be something that is experimentally established. And all compounds that have some molecular formula are going to be multiple of this empirical or simplest formula. A good example is a compound like hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide in nature has two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. Remember, all, um, all molecules are bonding in whole number ratios. But if I were to break up all of that H2O2 into the smallest pieces and put them into two piles, I would realize that I had one H for every one O. It's the lowest way that those elements are combined, and we call that simplest whole number ratio, the empirical formula. Uh, it's always going to be some multiple of the empirical. For, so for example, if I look at my molecular formula for hydrogen peroxide, it's going to be a multiple of two of my empirical, and we could get our subscripts there of H2O2. Notice the molar mass, which is always a capital M with an italic, is going to be twice as much as well. We're going to use that relationship as we go through this. But first, we need to figure out how we're going to find this simplest formula. So here are the steps to find. I'm going to get out of your way so you can uh, pause this and write these down. And then I'm going to go through each one of these steps with you as we go through the problem. OK, so first thing we need to do is we need to look at the problem, and we need to identify and list what we have available. So I'm looking at this problem, and it says, what is the empirical formula for a compound if a 7.5 gram sample, so that's our total sample, contains 1.191 grams of magnesium and 5.59 grams of chlorine. So there's our two elements involved. Now we may or may not need to use this, uh, this total grams of the sample. If we had to solve percent composition, we now have the total sample size. We could do something like that, but we may not need it. It may just be extra information. So I look at my two elements and I start a list with my known quantities. So there's my known quantities starting out. Uh, and the second step is we need to get to the moles because we need a molar ratio. We can't just have uh, masses. We have to get to the moles. So I'm going to go ahead and, and divide by the molar mass. So I look it up for those two elements. And I am going to solve for moles of Cl. So we divide by the molar mass, get to moles. And then I keep at least uh, two to three sig figs, just so you're not running into too many issues with rounding or, or that kind of thing. Okay, so we've done step two. Next, we're going to do step three, and we're going to um, we're going to look at what our formula is right now, and we need to get it to a whole number. So if I were to, to leave this as is, my ratio is I have 0.786 moles of Mg per mol 0.157 moles of Cl. The problem is I can't have a, a, a partial um, f a formula. I can't have a 0.786 of an atom of a magnesium. So we need to get to, to the lowest whole number ratio. To do this, we just divide each number of moles by the lowest number of moles. This is uh, step number three. So I'm going to divide by the lowest number. It's going to be my moles of magnesium. So I'm going to take both of these numbers and divide by that lowest number. Okay. So we divide those both. Uh, and when I do that, magnesium, I get an answer of 1. And chlorine, I get 1.997, which is basically 2. What this tells me is that the ratio of magnesium to chlorine is 1 to 2. So magnesium, I'm not going to put any subscript here. Chlorine, but I had two of those. There's my empirical formula. I can just use those subscripts to um, make my empirical formula. OK, let's look at another example. Uh, you're going to see some examples where you're given percent composition, and you have to find the empirical formula, too. So I want to show you one of those. What is the empirical formula for benzoic acid if its percent composition is, and they give you your, some percentages, by mass? So we learn what that is, and we learn how to solve for that. But now they actually give us the percent composition. So what we're going to do is we're going to step four says we're going to assume that we have 100 grams of this substance. If I have 100 grams, this makes it really nice because 68.8 of those, a percent of the compound is carbon. That means that 68.8 grams is going to be carbon. 
So we're going to turn all those percentages directly into grams and then solve the problem the exact same way. Convert our grams to moles using the molar mass. Okay, divide by the molar mass. We get our moles of compound. Once we have our moles, we're going to take each of those, this is step three, and we're going to divide them by the lowest number of moles present, 1.64, and we're going to get our final answer of 3.53 and 1. Now, step five says we need to get to whole numbers at the end. So here is where I cannot actually stop, because if I try to make a formula, I can't have three and a half moles of C, or I can't have three and a half atoms of C for the simplest formula. So what we do is we multiply by some whole number, or something, so that we can get to whole numbers at the end. So three and a half, I multiply that by two, and I multiply everything by two, then I can find seven, six, and two. This is the simplest whole number ratio. If I were to just do 3.53 and one, that's not a whole number anymore. So I, I go ahead and look at my elements involved. I have carbon, we have seven of those. Hydrogen, six of those. Oxygen, two of those. Here's my empirical formula for benzoic acid. Uh, last thing I want to say is uh, I need to be able to, at some point, go from the empirical formula and determine the molecular formula. So because the empirical formula is the simplest, the molecular is always a multiple of the simplest version. So to find this, we're going to take the formula mass or molecular mass of a compound okay, and divide that by the empirical formula mass. So I'll say empirical formula mass. And if we divide those out, we're going to get some number. Okay, and that number we're going to multiply by the empirical formula to get our molecular formula. Um, so I'll show you what this looks like. And that number out in front is going to be multiplied by the subscripts of the empirical. Okay, so let me show you an example. The molecular mass of benzene is 78.0 grams per mole. We don't know what that actual compound's formula is, but we do figure it out in the lab. It's an empirical formula. I break it all up, and then I have one C for every one H. So I'm going to take my empirical formula and find the molar mass of it. So I add up, I have one carbon and one hydrogen, so I add up the molar masses of each. And the molar mass, my empirical formula, molar mass, is going to be equal to 13 grams per mole. So I know that my molecular formula it has to be some multiple of that 13. So I take 78 divided by 13, and it's going to give me 6, 6 times as big. So all I need to do is I need to take my empirical formula and multiply it by that number, 6, and that 6 is going to be applied to the subscripts. So we're going to have C6H6 as our final answer. All right, this was a, a brief intro on molecular and empirical formulas, and I hope it was helpful.